Hello everybody, my name is Kennedy and today I am doing a book review on Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. This is an older book of his. It's one of Brandon Sanderson's less talked about series. It's about a boy named David and he basically has this vendetta against epics. Epics are people with superpowers in this world. This one epic in particular called Steelheart who has taken over the city of Chicago has basically ruined his life by killing his father and reinventing Chicago in his image and taking over and basically wiping out government and the world is like this where a lot of big cities have like a reigning epic and that is Steelheart for Chicago. So he basically teams up with the people called the Reckoners who are a rebel group who take down epics. Basically they hatch a plan to try and take care of Steelheart and have David kind of fulfill this vendetta he has for Steelheart killing David's father. I give this like a 3.8. It was almost a 4 but I really think that this is more of a 3.5. I will be continuing on with the series. I believe this is a trilogy with a little novella, but overall I really enjoyed the darkness of it and how this is kind of a anti-hero like villain story. It's kind of like how when people have powers and none of the heroes rise up and only like the villains take over. It's very interesting. It's categorized as YA. It has like same kind of feel as Ren Renegades, but a little bit more adult than Renegades. It has to deal with like a band of characters. There's people with power so you get to have like this interesting fold with people with powers and people without. Overall I really enjoyed it. Very fast paced, very action oriented. It's not terribly long. It's about 300 and something pages, almost 400 pages. Went by pretty fast once you kind of get into the story. The last 100 pages though are the best and the info dumping and setup is not terrible. Like it's good writing. Brandon Sanderson has just great writing and he's able to give you so much information but in such a good and interesting way. I highly recommend you start the start the series. I think it will probably only get better as you hear more powers and more cities that are taken under control of epics. If you have read the book or just want to be spoiled, continue on watching, but that is it for my spoiler-free review. Hi, everybody who have either read the book or want to be spoiled. Hello, I'm going to put this down. Let's talk Steelheart. So Steelheart is an epic who is just mean and just likes power. The whole book starts off with David and his father going into that bank and basically these banks won't insure companies or businesses because epics are starting to do more destruction so insuring people is becoming way more expensive but at this bank obviously epics come and there's a battle between Steelheart and his father dies in the process of trying to protect Steelheart heart because he believes that he's a hero. In this battle or fight, the bullet that, that hits Steelheart, he bleeds from it and gets a scar, which is known as one of his famous scars from then on. David has seen Steelheart bleed, an epic that is known to be invincible, where like bullets that hit him like do scratch nothing. Like he is, he turns everything to steel. He is invincible basically. Years pass, David has been in like these factories that give him schooling while well was working. So that's where a lot of children go now so that they have like a place to sleep and food. It's better than than being on the streets, which is so hardcore. The whole city has been turned into steel, which is, I think, really cool. Imagining it in my mind, that people have gone like underground, and like the higher you go in Chicago, the more likely you're going to encounter an epic. That's why people keep digging lower and lower. He is basically on this mission once he graduated or graduated or got out of the factory that he's going to become a reckoner. Reckoners are this group, right, that basically tries to take out as many epics. So he's basically an epic mastermind. He knows so many things about so many places and he figures out where the Reckoners are probably gonna hit next in Chicago and he gets it right and actually helps them out. He then meets the whole gang of the Reckoners which I have to read from here so he meets Megan, Cody, Abraham, Prof, and Tia. Megan headstrong. We later learn she's an epic, which I did not see coming. I, I think I should have known when she couldn't use the, ten, the, the tensors, the tensors that like kind of manipulate steel and turn it to dust. Should have guessed that she wasn't because it couldn't be used on epics, but you only find that out in the second half of the book. Then we meet Cody, who is probably my favorite out of all of them. I love how he tries all these accents. He says he's like a quarter Aussie, but he's like Scottish and he has all of these stories. I loved him as a character just because he he just felt 
he was that comedic relief that I really liked. As well as like Abraham, he did have some good comedic relief as well, but he was very like headstrong, very trustworthy, but like the muscle of the group, which like I always assume like with the muscle of the group, it's kind of like Kellen Lutz from Twilight. I always think that when I think of the muscle of the group. Don't ask me why. I liked their different personalities, how Cody's way more outgoing and Abraham's more kind of like in the background. And then we meet Prof, who is kind of the leader of the Reckoners, who we later find out is also an epic, but he's one of those epics that are really powerful. They're called gifters. So they basically don't really use their gift for themselves. They have to give it to other people and they can't give it to other epics usually. They could only give it to people who do not have powers. And then there's Tia who is like the knowledge, the brain. She basically like is just super super smart and knowledgeable about all these things and she's kind of like how I picture like you know Kim Possible you know the guy behind the co like the computer that's kind of who she is so David basically bombards their whole thing to get an epic the epic ends up dying he gets involved and they like decide that he can stay because he has seen Steelheart bleed and he has valuable information and plans to get Steelheart. I was like boasting for David the whole time. I love him as a character. He's just so nerdy and so invested and while like that investment is like for vengeance in the first half, I do think his priority changes once he realizes that he has now have, he now has people in his life. So he's realizing that while this is his whole life, he's starting to see that like people are getting hurt at his expense and I think he really feels that when like Megan dies. She doesn't die but when he die, when she dies he really feels that and it's like shit. Like I think Prof says something about like you're living for Steelheart you need to just learn how to live. It's like that hit hardcore. And then we have the epics. So we have Steelheart, then we have Firefight who is what we see now as an illusionist but we don't figure that out until midway through the book. We have Night Wielder who brings darkness. I think he has wings. I kind of didn't really understand his, his power. He goes I believe like translucent so that like bullets and things like just go through him. When he hits was hit by sunlight he becomes like stone and you're able to hit him. I think. And then the other one we we know about is Conflux and how he brings like energy to enforcement and basically to Chicago. He's very very powerful. One of the scenes I really enjoyed was when they're down in the weapons trying to get weapons for themselves and Nightwielder comes and they're trying to get away and he pretends to be like that assistant and prove his theory about Nightwielder and all this stuff about the UV lights and stuff. I really enjoyed that scene. I love how David thinks on his feet. He gets later gets called out for prof for like you can't think on your feet because it might affect other people but I was like that was brilliant like it was brilliant I really enjoyed that whole scene so the scheme of the book is basically to take out some big epics in some big places within Chicago and make it seem like another really big epic is coming for Steelheart so that they can get Steelheart in a battle and kill him with their many theories on how he could be indestructible some of these are like they go to a power plant and they take down the power plant to kind of cut electricity from Chicago. Then they want to steal Conflux who is enforcing the enforcement so they want to take away that. And then they go down to the bank to try and see if there's anything down there in that bank vault that could have inhibited like his powers which they realize is there's nothing really there. They take down these epics and this all going to according to plan and then Megan dies and it's kind of like a really big shock to everybody but then Steelheart allows them a place and time for them to meet so they decide on the big baseball field. It was a shit show. I mean that whole field scene was a shit show. They know all of their plans because they're talking on a link through comms of tele of um, cell phones, but they don't realize that Megan was firefight, but she had her cell phone and she basically was like reincarnated. She basically was giving all of the information from her Megan, her old life, to steal her. So they knew basically all of these plans. David uses like those comms to his, to his advantage and gets Night Wielder and kills him basically. And then he comes one-on-one -on -one with Megan and she basically explains to him that she like reincarnates and it takes her a while to kind of get her bearings of who she is and what her past life was. You can tell that he like loves her, it's obvious, but like he realizes that like she has to like kind of figure out like where she stands in the world because she's just like so confused. You later realize how much of a confusion it is and how it can change your personality when you use like your powers because it happens to prof when you later realize he's an epic 
Alec after the whole thing and he kind of has to take a few moments to kind of regain himself after using so much of his gift because it takes like a toll on him. So David then realizes how much of a toll it's taking on her after like reincarnating herself. So she then like records everything and sees like David basically professing his love for her and she's like, I don't know what the frick like to do. And so he like basically leaves her there because well she's fine she's an epic she can create illusions like she's not like by herself like it's she's fine david does come one-on-one -on -one with steelheart after he thinks prof is dead he sends t and the others out because cody is wounded and down and needs help so he thinks prof is dead and basically is just trying his last stitch effort with the gun that they found in the bank vault that scraped Steelheart in the first place. He shoots at him, the gun doesn't work. So basically Steelheart is going to kill him with his own gun, but David, quick on his feet, understands that the only way he can die is if someone who is not afraid of him basically shoots at him and c can kill him. Who's not afraid of Steelheart? Well, Steelheart is not afraid of himself. Self. So he jams the gun and basically as he like goes to shoot it at him it explodes and all this things and he dies. And yeah, that is like the whole premise of the whole book is to get Steelheart and now once Steelheart's gone it's very up in the air which I'm very excited for like the second book because I want to know like are other epics gonna come in? Are hero epics now gonna like come out of the woodwork now that like the big monarchy of Steelheart is gone? This whole book leads up to that death and you get that death in like the last chapter and it leaves you off of not knowing where to go but knowing that like him the Reckoners will be there no matter what and it like leaves off on that hopeful note. It was a great book. It was a great ride. I really enjoyed the action in it. I really enjoyed the whole hero, anti-hero aspect of it. I thought it was very well put together. Brandon Sanderson just knows how to weave a book. I gave like a 3.8 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it and we'll continue on with the next book. Let me know if you read it. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys!